and that's a lot of porno rentals. I don't know if you saw. We, uh, in spite of that joke, have a great show for you tonight. Thank you for coming down, everybody. Mr. David Cassidy is with us. We'll do a quick Tonight came to fame as Keith Partridge in the Partridge Family back in the 70s. His most recent album is called Didn't You Used to Be? And he just ended a successful run on Broadway in the play Blood Brothers. He has a new book out, Come On, Get Happy, Fear and Loathing, on the Partridge Family bus. We'll be discussing just moments from now, and I hold him personally responsible for that shag haircut I got when I was 11. So, ladies and gentlemen, David Cassidy. <laughs> the book at the top of the show. It is David Cassidy. Uh, is it? Come on, get happy. Now, this is your, your first book, obviously. How did this come about? What prompted what were you to decide to sit down and pump one of these puppies out? Well, I sit around and had nothing to do that day, so I thought, let's write a book, you know? Really? Yeah. I was going to say, I thought this took at least uh, two or three days to... <laughs> Uh, now, actually, there are some very, there's some very good stories. Anybody who was a fan of the Partridge family, I know I was, uh, genuinely will be interested in much that is revealed in here. Much. Case in point, uh, uh -huh. I go to page 180 with uh, some mentions of Susan Day. Here. Yeah, here we go. Uh, but there are some here people comes the dirt. toward whom, as you meet them, you feel an animal attraction. You just want to have sex with them. The truth is... I guess I never felt that way with Susan. I thought she was really attractive, but sexually, I never had the hunger for her. So, uh, you know, it warmed up real quick in this video, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Did you feel that? Did you feel that? Yeah. Uh, did you date her, yes, uh, during the show, during uh, the shooting of Partridge Family? Um, contrary to public opinion, she and I were great friends, and, uh, I mean, I, I hope she's still my friend after this book. Have you not, heard from her since you wrote it? I haven't spoken to her. I did, uh, did write her a letter, though, a little disclaimer. Uh -huh. um, no. I, I, you know, when you know someone that well and you go through it, we were nine, I was 19, she was 15, and we instantly just, I hate to use that word, bonded. Wait, but we but you were did buds. sort of bond. Yeah, we were really good friends. And she was like something you'd give noogies to. It wasn't like an <laughs> intimate thing. Noogies to... Uh, Noogies are wrong. You know, I had that perfect shag. I couldn't really noogie. Uh, no, I, yeah, I noogied her a few times. Okay, all right, I did that. The, the point is, like you guys were buds. You were friends. We were real good pals, and she was a very, very close confidant of mine. And I, without having someone like that, I would have probably blown my brains out at that time, you know. It was very important to have a relationship with somebody like that, and we were very good friends. She... Uh, dated lots of different people um, and had a long-lasting relationship during that show with someone else yeah. um, who was related to the show. I feel you, like I'm revealing something now, 15 no, years later. No, not at all. Have, uh, you, actually, have you talked to her since the book came out, though? No, no okay. I've been on the road doing the all right. promotion thing. Uh, here's another one. This is about uh, groupies, which I'm sure you yeah. obviously dealt with in mass quantity. Uh, this says, sometimes I dive into the back of the car and find a woman waiting for me. I remember in Banger, no, wait, Maine. No, wait, no. We're talking about being out on the road. Just uh, let's just set the set the story straight here. Oh, see, I, I used to have a car that would pick me up at the end of the show. You got it, and um, yeah, then I dive in the. 